Welcome to Attic to Basement Estate Cleanouts, where one house in Bethesda had a beautiful bedroom set in 2008. I don't know who made it or exactly how old it is, but I loved it. It's from before World War II. The set had a double bed, two nightstands, dresser, a vanity with a mirror, and a chest on chest. I thought it was, and still believe, one of the most beautiful bedroom sets ever made. I kept thinking I would ask the attorney if I could buy the set, but I didn't really have room for all the pieces. I met with the son at the end of February, and a few days later, one of my helpers and I started working on packing up the charity items and clearing out the food from the kitchen cupboards. You'll see from the photos that it was a very clean house. It was built in 1959. It had already been sold by the time I was called in. The son wanted to keep four paintings and the porch furniture went to a family friend, but everything else was to go to Weschler's auction in Washington, D.C. Even the marble top coffee table and two wooden chests, which were not pieces I saw very often. My two helpers and I worked for five hours on the second day, packing up for the auction's moving crew. College hunks hauling junk came and took away the trash we had bagged up. When the auction movers came on the third day, they only needed two hours to get everything on the truck. As a side note, I've always kicked myself for not speaking up and asking how much they wanted for the bedroom set. Six years later, I came across the, some of the same exact pieces in a house, and this time I did ask about it. The family wanted to keep all the pieces except for the double bed, which they gave me. I still have it, and I've slept in it many a night. The next residence was a beautiful apartment on Connecticut Avenue Northwest in Washington, D.C. This job involved coordinating the elevator with the manager of the building and advertising to sell the upright Stuyvesant piano. The piano sold to a man whose ma daughter was only seven years old and was going to begin taking her first piano lessons. He didn't want to buy a new piano until he was sure she liked playing the piano. I sold him the piano for $200, and he had a piano mover come and pick it up from the apartment. I also worked with Moyer's Moving Company, who took some items to the daughter of the deceased. She lived in the Midwest. Then Weschler's Auction House sent their moving crew for three days to pack and move out what they wanted to sell at auction. You will see from the photos here and on my Facebook page that the apartment was very full of furniture and mirrors. There were over six large wall mirrors, lots of large statues, portraits, ornate silver flatware, tea set, clocks, and art. It's nice to work around lovely objects. Some items were stored in the basement of the building in a storage unit. We had to have the maintenance man show us where the storage unit was and then open the boxes and we had to decide what would go to charity and what Weschlers would be interested in auctioning. That's why the tabletops are so full of items in the photos. This job took seven days, and we got to leave the trash bags in the apartment for the building staff to take care of. The final place is an apartment and storage cage in Silver Spring, Maryland, at a senior development. I was hired by an attorney in Maryland, and the family was in Virginia. I have a note that says, to get to the storage cage, get the key from the engineer, go to the basement level, get off the elevator and turn right, and then turn left once inside the storage room. It was bin number 196. Obviously, there were lots of storage cages. 
Mostly the tenants stored suitcases and holiday decorations, but sometimes there were bicycles and small furniture and trip souvenirs. We started this job at the end of March. My two helpers and I started in the bedroom with clothing and bathroom linens the first day. The next day we went room by room in the apartment, bagging trash, boxing up charity, and making a list of what we were sending to charity. On April Fool's Day, one helper and I worked in the storage room all morning. The next day, I met a trash hauler who took away the bags of trash we had accumulated in broken furniture and dirty area rugs. The next day, I met the auction company who picked up furniture and the boxes we had packed. College hunks hauling junk came back for another load of trash. The next week, I drove to the apartment and was there for 15 minutes to meet a person who was named in the will and was packing up a mirror. Three days later, I went for 20 minutes to meet a man who took away a dresser and the sofa bed. I don't know for sure, but I probably charged the client an hour of my time on the last two days to meet these men. Take a look at the interesting art and the etched mirror in these photos. I took in on the enclosed porch there was a rattan furniture. There were two round rattan chairs with cushions and two bookcases out there with figurines and National Geographic magazines. Sometimes you can find a school that wants the National Geographics, but usually they went to the recycling bin. Well, that's enough for t today. Next week I have a real mess of a house to show you. I hope you never have to live in a house like it. Please hit the subscribe button and send along any comments on what you see here or questions you may have on running an estate cleanout business.